Leroy spent uh, a year at uh, Harvard getting a master's in law, uh, having uh, obtained a uh, Ford Foundation uh, scholarship. He uh, then spent a year, uh, a year or two, I don't remember, uh, teaching at the law school and was offered a position, but decided that he really wanted to uh, uh, to practice law. So he went to Ada, uh, became part of the law partnership there in Ada, and was very successful. Uh, he then went into private, not private, but became a, a state judge and uh, was very quickly recognized as one of the outstanding judges in Oklahoma. Uh, he came back, eventually came back to Oklahoma after uh, being appointed by Jimmy Carter to be uh, uh, to be uh, a district judge in Oklahoma City. West uh, came on the bench in 1979, and uh, as with everything else he did, he was a very hard worker. West has gotten lots of uh, of honors during his life. Uh, he's in the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. He's, as I mentioned, the Field Trial Hall of Fame. Uh, he's gotten uh, just countless awards and honors. Uh, there's one honor that's not given out that would be the one that's most appropriate for, uh, for Lee R. West, and that's the Best Friend Award. There's nobody that is a better friend than, than Lee R. West. I'm proud to say he was my friend I'm very sorry he's gone. I'll miss him every day. I love the man. Thank you. I witnessed his work ethic. He was a very hard worker. Um, you could set your watch practically by the time early in the morning that he would arrive at the courthouse for work. But another thing he really liked to do that was work connected is he liked to go to lunch. And he liked to go to lunch with his colleagues. For that period of time that we were colleagues, um, over well over 10 years, I can't count the number of lunches I attended with Judge West and with other colleagues. One of his favorite places was the old Boulevard Cafeteria downtown. People would constantly come up and talk to him. Uh, people who he hadn't seen in years, people who maybe he'd only met a time or two. And without fail, Lee West would know their name, call them by name, have a conversation with them, and then after they were gone, he would tell the rest of us something significant about that person. He was an amazing man, a true, kind-hearted, um, great friend, and I'll miss him every day. I'm not going to tell stories because I'm sure plenty of those will be told, and there certainly are plenty, some of which I actually believe to be true. What I'd like to do is share what some of you may not know about Judge West, and that is how kind and supportive and helpful he was to women in the practice of law, and indeed, everywhere. I came on the court as a magistrate judge in 1986, and for some six years, I was the only woman on the court. Judge West treated me absolutely the same as he did everyone else, including telling crass jokes in my presence, not tempering his language. He just accepted me as one of the guys, and uh, it, it made it so much easier for me to transition into this position. He was helpful to all women lawyers, and he always claimed it was from self-preservation. He was surrounded by women, his wife of over 60 years, his two daughters, his office staff, and so he had to be nice to us or suffer the consequences, or so he said. But in fact, as I've thought about this, Judge West was kind to everyone, especially those who needed a little help. He never, ever denied that. He was such a loyal friend. He was such a kind man. And that's how I'd like you to remember him. Judge Lee West was truly uh, one of a kind. He was an exceptional judge, and he was an exceptional human. I remember in 2012, when he was inducted into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, in his acceptance remarks, he said something to the effect that, uh, he said, I've never had an original thought, but I've got a great memory, 
and I'm a great plagiarizer. Number two, uh, some of the other advice uh, or stories that he told that uh, he often attributed to his to his father. Uh, I, I remember he he was always fond of the one where he said, "You should never uh, you should never believe a man is telling you the truth if you know you'd lie in the same situation." Or one of his uh, favorites was he claimed that his dad had told him that you should never take a laxative and a sleeping pill at the same time. Well, that's pretty good advice, or at least you need to be pretty careful if you're going to do it. And the idea of being careful is something that Lee had a very specific understanding of. He always maintained that careful was a naked man trying to climb across a barbed, a barbed wire fence. I think it's also very clear that <clears throat> there's nobody who was any more committed to the rule of law and committed to the Constitution, committed to fairness for everybody who showed up in his court than was Lee West. That tremendous uh, uh, ability to enjoy people and to like people was a defining aspect of Lee West's character. Uh, he was a great friend to all of us who knew him. He was one of a kind, and we'll miss him. Lee West was the most unique individual I think I ever met. He had a brilliant mind, but also a world of common sense, which served him well throughout his life. To me, he was not only a fellow judge, but a good friend. He was very helpful as a mentor to me when I first came on the bench. His door was always open, except, of course, when he had nap time after lunch. But Lee was helpful in discussing cases, discussing issues, difficult issues, and problems that arose. I think he also served as a mentor and was helpful to all many other judges. Lee and I shared a special bond of having grown up in small town rural Oklahoma. We shared those experiences often and the people who helped us along the way. He was compassionate and caring and always interested in others. I don't think I ever had a conversation with Lee that he didn't ask about how I was doing and how members of my family were doing, as well as mutual friends that we knew. He was truly loved by all of those who knew him. We all enjoyed his stories, even though he may have told them many times, they were always refreshing and funny, and we loved to hear them. I consider myself a very fortunate to have been a friend of Lee West, and both professionally and personally and I will always remember his kindness and friendship. Uh, the Federal Bar Association came to me and they said they were trying to get attendance up in, in the meetings and would I agree to be president of the, the Federal Bar Association? And I said, no, I don't have time to do that, but I'll ask my clerks to get involved and I'll give you a really good program. Why don't we have a debate between Lee West and me over the relative merits of trial judges and appellate judges? It sort of took on a life of its own, and um, Andy Coates became our, our agent. Of course, he's a good agent to have, and he ended up booking us at the American College of Trial Lawyers. Um, Andy introduced us, and we had, uh, we had our, our debate. And I thought I'd just read you some of, of Lee West's um, aphorisms that he used throughout this debate. He said, trial judges are just like mules, we have no pride in the past and no hope in the future. We're very much like friendly drunks. Speak to us and we will take up with you. He said, we don't try to achieve immortality by our work. We try to do it by not dying. And he said, we really don't mind being reversed all that much, but that damned Sisyphean remand stamp should be outlawed. He said, appellate judges, quoting the old adage, were those who come onto the field of battle after the fighting is over to shoot the wounded. He did compliment me by saying that I had emerged as a towering figure among 10th Circuit appellate judges, which is somewhat akin, he said, to being the tallest building in Antlers, Oklahoma. Uh, he did point out that I said some laudatory things in his book but he said writing anything laudatory is very difficult for an appellate judges. And he closed by saying, a wise old senior trial judge once told a group of us, remember boys, 
when you're shooting at appellate judges, aim low, because they all ride Shetland ponies. He was a brilliant man, a conscientious judge, and a person with a sense of humor, the like of which we will probably never see in another appellate judge or trial judge. I got to know Judge Lee West in two ways. First, I practiced law in front of him for about 21 years after he came to the federal courthouse, and that included uh, several jury and non-jury trials. Secondly, uh, Lee was my next door neighbor here at the courthouse for about 18 years. As my next door neighbor, I could get up from my desk, walk down the hall, and be seated at his desk in about 30 seconds. To have Lee West and his experience and his wit and wisdom just down the hall was a priceless gift. He was the intellectual equal of any lawyer who ever appeared in front of him, and I dare say the intellectual equal of any judge he ever served with. But what I will really remember about Lee West is the fact that he is the prime example, in my experience, of the success story that can result when a person, although of humble origins, has the opportunity to get an education and then to take himself as far as his talent and hard work can take him. Lee West was a joy to have as a friend. He was a joy to appear before as a judge. He was a joy to have as a colleague. He was truly, in every way, an inspiration. Lee R. West stories are unending, of course, but during the course of our judgeship together, we went to lunch almost every day. Well, one day he didn't show up. We were concerned about it. And later we learned that on his way to the courthouse, a homeless man on a dilapidated bicycle had run into him and slightly damaged his pickup truck, but totally destroyed the bicycle. Well, <clears throat> he gathered up the homeless man, gathered up the bicycle, and took him to either Target or Walmart and bought him a brand new bicycle, wished him well, and came on back to go to lunch with us. That was Lee R. West. He certainly was the most fiercely loyal person to his friends of anyone I have ever known. He was just a wonderful colleague and was just as gregarious and full of mischief and fun and just as smart as he was when I first formed my impression of him. He was a great guy for the 65 years that I knew about him, and there certainly has been nobody to compare to him that I'm aware of. My good friend Lee West, he was one of a kind. Uh, after I got off the bench, I was defending a case where there was 14 deaths, 17 personal injuries. There was a lot of insurance, and the owner of the company that caused the accident wanted the case settled. So Judge Payne appointed Judge West as the settlement judge. This couple comes in, uh, parents, she had a picture of her son. She set it on his desk and he said, she said, this is my deceased son. So the mediation process started up and the insurance adjuster was being a little bit tight fisted and so these are numbers by way of example. The, the insurance adjuster was at two million and the mother wanted 2.5 million. And so came back and he went up about $50,000 and he said, Lane, he said, let's go back here to the jury room. And he said, Mike, you come back here with him. Well, he was the adjuster and he said, you sit down in that chair. And he says, let me tell you something, you little stingy SOB. This family needs $2,500,000. He said, here's a legal pad. He said, I want you to write the name of your boss and his cell phone number on there. And I'm going to tell him that you're committing bad faith. And I'm going to be a witness if, if the company sued for bad faith. And he said, now, do I have $2.5 million for this family so we can get this over with? Lane's over looked at me and he said, yeah, Judge, 2.5 million. So we go back in there and Judge West sits down. He said, 
Miss so and so, the company wants to give you two point five million dollars. And so they hugged and left and we were having dinner that night, Lane and I were, and he said, Did you hear what he called me? I said, Yeah, I did. And he said, also, he said, he's the mediator. He said, can he testify, can he accuse me of bad faith and then testify in a bad faith case? I said, well, I don't know where he can or not, but he thinks he can, and that's all that matters. And tell you, Lee, we're going to miss you. Thanks. But what astonishes me is that to those people who knew him or heard him speak or just ran into him at the Boulevard Cafeteria, Lee West was not defined by the struggle of his life or even by his position as a federal judge. I cannot imagine the drive it must have taken to get from Antlers to Harvard and then to the federal bench. But when you talk to Lee West, you never saw ambition or any hint of arrogance. Lee was first and always a great storyteller. He was funny and he was a loyal friend. He loved bird dogs and reading. He loved his wife, Mary Ann, and his family. And he liked sitting around talking with friends. Uh, I also wanted to share with you finally, <coughs> pardon me, a poem that was one of Judge West's favorites. Judge West, as you may know, was an avid reader, a, a voracious reader since he was a young boy. And he credited that more than anything else with uh, his desire to go to OU and achieve everything that he achieved in life. This is a poem called No Regrets by Tom Word. My life grows short, I somehow know. I dread not death or where I'll go. My life's been blessed with much good luck. I've run the country in pickup trucks with guns and bums and bird dog pups. Thank you for listening. And goodbye to you, Judge West, my old friend. In the passing of Lee West uh, is certainly the ending of an era for my life. I first met Lee West in 1961 when I was a junior law student, and he came in to teach at the law school for that year. He taught us evidence and trial practice, and then, of course, he went away, went on to to Harvard and got a master's in his in the study of evidence. When he did his fly up to become the chief judge, he asked me to be the keynote speaker and I did that and, and uh, took a lot of hide off of him as we uh, presented it that day and it was a fun time. He said that day, he said he invited his friends from Antlers uh, to come up to the uh, his inauguration as chief judge. He said, they said, no, they couldn't come. They had to stay home and wash the car. He said, but if they ever got appointed, appointed anything important, like the Park and Parole Board, why, they would come up. Uh, at his the time that he was taking his chief judge, instead of getting a great portrait of him to hang on the wall, they un unveiled the portrait, and it was a picture of his bird dog. Which, um, his passing has truly um, been touching for me and for all of us who, who knew and loved and worked with Lee. Uh, when, they, when they created Lee West, they broke the mold. There would never be another one like him, and, and never should be. And, and as I think of his leaving us, I think of the poem in which the poet said that he fell like the great pine upon the hill and left a lonesome place against the sky. For those of us whose life Lee enriched, his passing will certainly leave a lonesome place against our sky.